This podcast over. always starts with some type of food group. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. And I know it's not me leading into it. <laughs> <laughs> Who started this? It was it's Nancy. whenever it Aaron's it on Nancy. this podcast, though. No, no, no. Chill, chill, chill. It's <laughs> only <laughs> ever, we've only gone into food when you're on this podcast. <laughs> Ice cream. We did. What yeah. was the one after that? We debated ice cream. We debated. Uh, uh, last yeah, time we went out, out Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So now this one's what does a person prefer, breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Hey, Amen. Breakfast all day. Breakfast. breakfast. Gotta be breakfast. Aaron, Aaron approached me a couple weeks ago, very mm-hmm. serious. I think it was in the car. And we're driving. And he was like, hey, are you not a breakfast person? Oh. And then I was like, he turned down the music. I was like, yeah, I was like, Let's talk about this. like he said it as if it was like very like he'd been thinking about it and he's got to get some stuff it. off his chest. And he's like, I is you're not a breakfast person. I was like, mm. yeah. And he's like, do you, do you have it every day? And then I was like, I mean, no, I, I don't have it every day. I, well, it, it's almost like, well, then I don't think you're a breakfast person. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm like trying to defend oh my God. that I am a breakfast person. Yeah, I'm breakfast. like, no, I am, bro, I am. Well, then what do you get down on in breakfast? And I'm trying to, like, give this apologetic on, I like, you know, I like omelets, and I like, I'll do waffles. And he's just like, he's like taking an intake <laughs> on it. Mm. Like, and so I think we finished, and he gave me, you know, an acceptance up. that I'm down with, I'm down with breakfast. Wow, the level of conviction. <laughs> yeah, bro, it's it's his heart. It's his heart. Yeah. We went on vacation a couple years ago. And in the mornings, you're just like rocking because we were in Europe. Mm-hmm. And then Aaron, on like day four, he's like, hey, guys, I just <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just have one one request. I think maybe even Erica asked it for him. Like, he didn't want to <laughs> say it. <laughs> and he's just like, you know, this whole time we've been on this trip, not once have we gone to breakfast. Oh, man. Can we just like maybe go to breakfast one day? And we're like... Yeah, Aaron. For you, we'll give up on seeing the Mona Lisa. We'll go get <laughs> right. We'll go get up a, in the morning for you, and buddy. having French onion soup for the first thing in the morning. <laughs> yeah, nah. That's no. No, by like noon. No, but no, in the that's morning we'd get like a latte and a croissant. You know, like because we're that's ripping. Solid. We're ripping. And he's a f- completely offended by it. <laughs> Coffee <laughs> is <laughs> breakfast, by the way. Yeah. Coffee's breakfast? Coffee, uh, yeah, for me at least. I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. <laughs> you crossing that's the line. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Never invited back. <laughs> yeah. That's called fasting. That's, 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 not, that's not eating. Melissa has left that's the not, chat. That's not actively <laughs> eating. <laughs> Did you see the uproar? <laughs> I know. Yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. gosh. The most yeah. controversial <laughs> thing done on the podcast today. Yeah. Very is. <laughs> with this group lately that always oh, seems to wow. start with food with Aaron. Yeah. It's big, <laughs> controversial takes on eating is it's a big deal. It is. It is. Because now wild. we're going to see everyone in the comments going back and yeah. forth on <laughs> breakfast, lunch, dinner. How did the poll Everything turn like out last time? I know somebody put one up of in and out versus. Oh, yeah. What was it? Nancy what would, or uh, Alizé would it know was that. Pretty, it was pretty oh. close. I mean, I think obviously in and out pretty much took it. But you had Amen. some diehard Chick-fil-A, mm-hmm. you know. Mm. Yeah, they're not in the same category. People. No, just, yeah, they did mention that I don't too. Not being in the uh, same category, you could put like, like raising canes and Chick Fil A in the same category. Right. Zaxby's the same category. Any other? What about Dave's food? Hot Chicken? Uh, Dave's Hot <laughs> Chicken is a local thing. It's fine. but um, I feel like that's more. I tear that up like yeah, there's no it's tomorrow. It's very niche. It's I I like Dave's. I just that but is very honey? greasy. Dave's oh, is very greasy. It's greasy and so good. Yeah. Raising canes to me is my spirit or my stomach. Yeah. Yeah, raisin canes to me is not, but like Dave, Dave's hot like hot I could have raisin but canes so little. for lunch and feel like I'm not like cheating or like oh I gotta I gotta not eat tonight. Mm-hmm. If I have Dave's, it's like that's it. I can't. Oh. I Dang, water for the rest like of the that? day. Water Are for the talk, rest. We're talking like Five Guys greasy. Like I think so. I think it's heavy. Well, the I mean, I think it's very like, heavy. Yeah, it's like half the chicken on the sandwich. It's pretty big. Mm. It's a heavy. It's so good though. And it's hot, like it's spicy, so like really spicy. Yeah, that's why like, you don't have like crumbs behind. Okay, yeah, sure. so you Keep just going. feel you. F- uh, to me, I feel so heavy. To me, like if you have like, if you have um, like every time I have Roscoe's chicken and waffles, mm. I don't eat for two days. I wow. fast for two, two days. Two wow, days. What happens? That's wow. how long it takes for me to not feel uh, full anymore. What do you eat at Roscoe's? <laughs> I mean, like, to fast I, for two days. You gotta, you no, gotta get. You gotta get the, the two waffle it, joints. 
With the, the, the Barack chicken. Obama. Yeah. That bo- yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, And then you got to get the macaroni and cheese on the side. Yes. And yeah. then the sweet tea. Yes. That's what us yes. brothers get, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> But yeah, I just get the ba- I like the uh, I like the the breast on it. I'm not. Um, I don't go for the wing. I get like what is it? The one one two wings in a breast or something like that. And then the waffles. I haven't been in a minute because I don't eat chicken anymore. I've not been in years. Wait, what is <laughs> happening? What, what is happening? This podcast is crazy. Oh, you don't eat chicken. Oh, did, is that per? You went to the like that? That's the Oriental. <laughs> yes, uh, the medicine uh, medicine doctor, mm-hmm. right? The so body type oh. and all that. Chicken doesn't go for your body type. Correct. Oh. It does well, not it sit right with then. me. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm scared and like, to go to that. And like when you heard that from him, <laughs> you were like, and they say you can't have chicken. You were like, oh, yeah, I do feel sick when I eat chicken. Yeah, actually. Okay, wow. And it's one of those things where I noticed when I would prepare the chicken, like if I'm cooking at home, I would get almost like a little bit weirded out or like nauseous by it. Uh, mm. So I don't know if that um, is in correlation, but I would, I would think so. Hmm. Dang. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else besides chicken that he was like, yeah. There's a lot of things. Oh, it's like but hundreds. we'll be here for the next hour yeah. going oh. through the whole list. Oh, it's literally it's, hundreds. I can't go there. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> like some, here's the worst. Some people find <laughs> out, much. oh, you're 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 a vegetarian. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wait, you're what? like, wait, what? You're like, wait, what? And some people, it's like, you literally, your body type, your blood and all that only is accepting of uh, vegetables. So any meat oh. you mm-hmm. eat is like not going to be. And then there's other people that go. You literally can't eat any vegetables, and you can only eat meat per your blood type, you know? Yeah. And it, there, I think there's, like, seven frameworks or yeah, nine or something like that. Yeah, okay. But yeah. it is wild because, like, you would think that a certain way of eating could be classified as healthy, but mm. the reality is that everyone's body type is actually really different. Mm-hmm. So you have to figure out what works best for you because what works best for you might not work best for me, for you, so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What they do is they dangle a carrot in front of your face. <laughs> No, I'm just I'll, be, I'll be out. <laughs> that is Colin goes to the meeting and they this. just pull out a <laughs> carrot and they see if you salivate or not. Right. And if you don't, they I'll go, oh, he's not, <laughs> <laughs> he's not a vegetable guy. I'll be dry on that one. Oh my God. All right, everybody, welcome to Beyond the Letter. We've been at this thing already for a few minutes. Yes. We have one new person joining us today. We oh, have yeah. Alyssa hey. Cano hey. in the hey. house hey. hanging with us. She's What's on up, the friends? team at our church, Abundant Living. And um, she just had a baby. So for Damn many it. months, you were praying it and yep. working in children's. And so, yep. like, now you got uh, your babies just. Uh, is your baby at daycare or with uh, uh, your husband right now? My husband right now. Oh, yeah, I was Beto. watching her. Beto. And she just turned six months um, ah. two days ago. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. It's going by really quick. But first, she's a beautiful baby girl. First time mother. How is it? It's amazing. Yeah? Yeah. I honestly feel like. It's one of those things that you can't necessarily describe, and then once it hits you, it hits you. Yep. Um, and just the journey it takes to go through pregnancy and then go through delivery, I've never actually felt more connected to God and just, like, <laughs> seeing how his love is present, like, in having a child mm-hmm. and what that really looks like. So it's been amazing, and I'm finally at that point where I'm starting to, like, get my energy back, and I'm feeling good, mm-hmm. um, kind of just ready to tackle the world now. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. great. Yeah. So we also have Colin in the house. Um, so glad I could get on your schedule to be on this, Colin, <laughs> by the way. Stop. Thank you so much for making time for this. Hold on. <laughs> Only he knows I, what that means. So I'll be, I, no, because <laughs> I'll, I'll be in some of these group text messages, and Pastor Adam is like, hey, Colin, are you available to jump on the pod? <laughs> oh, no, not today. I don't, Who I'm talks not like available. That? <laughs> that's just like that's the how, tone I'm getting from. That's how my tone comes <laughs> I'm going to start sending voice messages. There was, there was one day he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in Mexico. And I responded, get your priorities straight. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm looking for the red eye to touch down yeah, any, yeah, any yeah, moment yeah. now. Helicopter yeah, exactly. So your priorities are out of whack, bro. You're on vacation in Mexico. What are you doing? And then we got uh, Pastor Aaron on the co-host seat. Um, good. And then we got Chelsea in the house. Alex, pretty full house today. We got mm-hmm. uh, Andy doing the cut today with that Beyond I Do hat repping. Mm-hmm. And we got Nancy repping uh, Los Angeles hat. Hey. Oh los los, do- los Doyer hat. Los Doyer hat. Might as well. <laughs> and uh, Alize and Gabe. I think I said Gabe already, but we could double them up. What shoes you wearing today, Gabe? Right you got some Reeboks. Oh, look at you yeah, venturing yeah. out. Yeah. Otta boy. Ooh, All brown. Ooh. All blue. <laughs> watch out. Watch out. <laughs> oh, no one can see this right now, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad I thought we were that what yard. he just Hold did on. was not on video. 
<laughs> I wish it was. We'd probably lose half, half, our, view, oh, half <laughs> oh, our viewers on YouTube. No. Everybody would switch to audio at that point. Oh, my goodness. Gabriel started oh. crumping right now. Right. That was serious. Yeah. You ever crump back in the day, Colin? I did. That's <laughs> embarrassing. I did. I had a feeling. I did. I had a yeah, feeling. You, you're giving <laughs> like you yeah. used to be. You give crumper vibes right. for sure, dude. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's hands down to me one of the worst dance forms ever really? created. Yes. It's, it, there I mean, is, have you ever tried it? There is, <laughs> come on. Have you, there, have you ever got out there and expressed yourself? Honestly, condensed. honestly. I mean this with sincerity. Yes. There is not enough money on this earth to get me to try that. <laughs> There's enough for me. Wow. There, okay. there, no, no, no. no. Yeah, it, if money was involved, I'd probably still be doing it. It, it, but. it is the, it's uh, honestly, it's, and we've said it before, but mm. many, many moons ago. It's the most cringe thing I've ever seen in my life. Really? Yeah, it just... And I'm sure there's things I like that are very cringe. But to me, when I see... when If I see a teenager doing it, it's okay. When I see mm. a grown man crumping... And maybe I'm just ignorant, but I've seen all the documentaries. Yeah. I have the respect where yeah. it was founded. You know, yeah. everything. I got all the respect. I've seen it all. I've, yeah. Because for many years, I thought maybe I just don't understand it. No, I I, I understand. <laughs> I have an understanding. I you understand. thoroughly understand okay, okay. it if you watch the documentary. Oh, 100%. 100%. Is it oh, just understand. like gosh, you do what you feel in that moment? No, I wouldn't say. Or is say there like. Can you make, how, how do you make your heartbeat? I mean, I'm not a, how do you make I'm your heartbeat crumping? Uh, the, the spokesman for crumping here. But can you show me how, how does your heartbeat with like a chest, a chest yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that your heartbeat? Like that? I mean, it could be your, just your chest beat, your, your breast beat, your breast plate popping up. But Which one is it? All of it. I mean, everything's in the chest. Everything that's in the chest. Let me see the chest. <laughs> Let me see the chest. How does it look? How does it look? You got the big so old like, New York jacket like with that, it too. Yeah, easy. see, that's easy. But profound. For, for <laughs> so that's a move. For, that was a crump. That, oh yeah, that wasn't. No, that wasn't a crump. That wasn't. That was crump a, he'd be but, like, like the little heartbeat. Your little heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get into it. How do you eat the Gabe heart? They just did it for There's us one right where you there. eat the heart, That wasn't right? as cringe, but when we're talking about... Yeah, do that one more time, Pastor Adam. Do that one more time. No, I retired already that fast. Can we shift the cameras that way? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, my explanation of it and from the people I grew up around it that, like, did it and they're still doing it as, a, like, a lifestyle thing going to shows and all that kind of thing, it's literally like a and ex our expression for them. Like just how anybody does maybe ballet or, or draws or paints, whatever, that's their expression to, you know, vent. A lot of it is venting, obviously yeah. aggressive okay. dance, but I mean, it's just their form of, okay, this is how I'm expressing where I'm at in life right now. Anyone who likes doing it, I don't think they should stop. I just think they should be aware of how they look <laughs> <laughs> to those that don't fully understand the culture oh, of man. it. Uh, because every other form of dance to me is like it's like okay it it, it, it pretty much makes sense. You know? uh, I wouldn't say every other I, form. What would it in Trinity do? It, you, did you, did <laughs> well, they just don't know how to dance yet. <laughs> That's the problem. And you can tell people in Trinity that because they try to dog me all the time. They come at you so hard. This this past Sunday, I'm preaching a sermon, and many people remember I, I use a puzzle of of myself, and I'm talking about right. breaking pieces up, blah blah. blah. So I'm I'm clowning on Aaron's uh, daughter Faith, and um, I said I said uh, it was something that she had. It was it was something I said. Oh, uh, that's whack. And she goes, it's a lot better than a dumb puzzle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, I can oh, and, and, and it just but it was that. ready. Quick, it was like, like, yeah, they don't care about your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> just, it was there. They don't care. I'm like, oh yeah, you 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 are your mama's They're daughter. Cool <laughs> You're Listen, not Pastor yeah. Aaron on that one. I can't wait until my daughter can talk. Yeah. Because she already says a lot with just her facial expressions. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, she's saying oh, she's a lot without talking. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of her mannerisms, like she looks like my husband. Like yeah. I'm not afraid to admit it. But her mannerisms and how like she like non-verbally communicates, I was like, oh shoot. I was like, that's all me right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For sure. I'm like, and I'm gonna have to deal with me <laughs> right. here soon. Yeah, yeah. She hit, the first time she hit me with the people's eyebrow, like in the hallway, and I'm like, Yeah, that's that's for mom and dad for sure. Oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Alyssa, so you've I noticed now you've started embracing TikTok heavy, doing it, not watching it, uh, mm -hmm. doing it. Yes. Give me the logic behind it. Why yes. why have you embraced it? Because maybe other people are like wanting to dabble into social media. Mm -hmm. I don't personally do social media. Yeah. I do it in like a capacity of, of ministry. And so yeah. uh, what you're like, you're doing maybe like two, three a day right yeah. now at this point, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So um, what made you embrace that? Because uh, 
For it's sure. new, right? Yeah. So there's this yeah. whole community that I found on TikTok, and it's basically mom talk. Okay. And so I just see these women supporting each other. I see them giving tips and tricks. I see them making money. Hey. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I was like, I'm always the type of person, like, if I see something and I know that I would be good at it, then I'm like, oh, I'm diving in. Mm. If, and then on the other end, like, if I feel like I wouldn't be good at something, I'm staying away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But just given my background of, like, marketing, branding, and sales... I see these things going on and I'm like, why not me? You guys are making an extra 2000 a month? Mm. Say less. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the gist of it. So you thought, okay, you thought mainly in like a business capacity and you felt like you have the personality to maybe move the ball forward with sure, it. Sure, the personality, yeah. but then also just like the knowledge base because mm -hmm. that's what I did for seven years Yeah, is okay. marketing, branding, and sales. And I'm like, I see women on uh, TikTok making thousands of dollars from like a curling iron, yeah. thousands of dollars from you know, a cute little picture frame. I'm like, I'm already buying that stuff because I'm a, a new homeowner. Mm -hmm. I'm already bringing that stuff into my house. I already have a lot of supplies I got for the baby. So I was like, why okay. not capitalize on that? It'd be so silly not you're to. you're going on TikTok and you're, you're, you're talking about your mom journey or you're talking about things you're buying for the house. Like, what's your, what's your pocket? So my niche is motherhood, um, um, motherhood, ministry, and um, what was the last one? Basically, motherhood and ministry. Okay. And so, essentially, what I'm doing, and is it I just marriage started in there, to, or Beto don't want no part. <laughs> you <husband>. literally. <laughs> I've seen the one where he I, rolled his eyes at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was yeah. pretty funny. Um, yeah, he doesn't really want a part in it now, but watch. If I start making money, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. he'll be in there doing the <laughs> that's dances. Always, that's how it he'll always Oh, you're doing dances grooving. on there, too. No. Oh, yeah, they're crumping. <laughs> yeah, I was crumping, actually. That's how we started the conversation. Got a battle going on. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. right. Um, so to answer your question, though, uh, a little bit of everything. Like, I feel like there's not enough awareness on, like, the C-section journey and, like, the, okay. uh, the, the post-op care or, like, lack thereof. So that tends to get a lot of views and a lot of likes because it's just like a topic nobody talks about. Um, so my thing is like, are we just going to ignore the fact that there's a whole portion of our body that's completely numb now? You know, are we not going to talk about the fact that that journey was so bizarre and that you just had a major surgery, mm -hmm. but you're expected to walk 10 minutes after? Like just yeah. some like weird stuff. That and you're grinding. You're like mom now. <clears throat> yeah. So you're like. <laughs> exactly. Put the car seat in the car or whatever, you know. Yeah. yeah. And just yeah. like the weird, funny stuff that's already taking place in my life. I'm like, press the record button. Got mm -hmm. it. Yeah. This resonates yeah, with a lot of people. Okay. Are you with, how long have you been doing it now? <laughs> a week and a half. A week? No uh, way. Yes. I feel like it's been longer. No, I literally yeah. just started But that's how the algorithm everything. works because you're in my contacts and other stuff like that. It's like pushing me your stuff every day. Oh, so really? I'm, yeah, I'm seeing I'm it sorry. every day. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> no one else on our team is I doing it. So it's like, yeah. I see Chelsea sometimes. Yeah. Chelsea be on there too, talking about her Beyonce stuff or whatever <laughs> else is happening in the world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. But yeah, that's how it works. It starts mm -hmm. first with like whoever's in your contacts. If they're on TikTok, it'll start pushing it to them first right. to give you a little bit of traction on the front end until your algorithm picks up what your content style is, which yeah. I'm sure in a week and a half it's already because mom talk is so so pretty niche yeah. that it's probably a thousand getting followers some... in a week and a half. Wow. Whoa. So I'm like, I'm just going to keep Play building no that. Game. That's great. Um, you know, in a you week only and need 5,000 to monetize. So yeah. Yeah, Come through. You're almost there. I know. Well, fifth of the way there. Look right. at that. Probably by the end of this month, you'll be <laughs> you'll be there. Right. That's what's great. You just need one video to hit, and and uh, you know people tend to to, to gravitate. You should do a yeah. video yeah. just doing your regular mom talk, and then have Colin crunking in the back. <laughs> that would be crazy. That would go Let's nuts. clap. I'm down. It probably get banned. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh my God! A little pop up. We do not. <laughs> yeah, that would get Congress to definitely, right. <laughs> definitely ban TikTok. And that's yeah. a so thing. how do you feel about that? <laughs> you started your oh, career man. journey in TikTok and Congress, <laughs> folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut it down. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna steer clear for your sake. <laughs> yeah, keep, yeah, keep the dance out of there. I think someone will buy it. Yeah. There's no way. TikTok is too big of a platform. It helps too many businesses. I think that I think that's like a, 180 days they have to sell it off to an American company. Yeah. So I. There's no way. I saw uh, the gentleman off of um, Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful. I forget what his real mm -hmm. name is. Uh, but he uh, went Kevin on. Kevin O'Leary. Yes. Yes. Wait. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that gentleman, he was talking about how, shoot, I'll buy it. Like, someone will pick it up. 
and it'll keep pushing forward. So I'm <laughs> fifty billion. Not too many people got got that fifty billion. Uh, you're gonna maybe have multiple to, people. It's gonna have to be a partnership deal for yeah. sure. There, there's, there's, but they gotta leave it alone. Mm-hmm. That's why I hope Meta or anyone don't touch it because yeah. they're gonna they're gonna mess with it. Mm-hmm. I hope it's someone that's not in tech that can uh, take it and and just double down on what TikTok's been able to do on its own. Mm-hmm. If a tech company gets it, they're gonna. They're going to do weird monetization strategies that are mm-hmm. potentially going to totally ruin it. So right. um, I get very infuriated when people send me reels on Instagram. I, I just I hate the Instagram reel <laughs> user experience. Jermaine does it, gives it to me all the time. And I always tell Jermaine, right, what do I say, Gabe, when he sends me an Instagram reel? I'm going to start blocking him if he, keeps, if he keeps sending me reels. I'm like, bro, go on TikTok. Stop sending me Instagram reels. <laughs> I feel that, though. Because you're on an Instagram yeah. reel, and someone right. sends you something about, like, a car, and then the next video is, like, like a total opposite thing that I'm, like, have zero interest in. And I'm, right. like, it's for the amount of times I've been on Instagram, how, mm-hmm. how have you, how, ha, how, how can TikTok craft an experience for you in, not in hours? Mm-hmm. And yet I've had Instagram since 2011, and <laughs> you still don't know <laughs> what I, what I want to see. You, yeah. Right? Yeah. You still show me the most random reels ever that I have zero interest in. Oh, my gosh. So, Back when you were using, like, heavy filters and stuff on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a whole different world then. Back then, most of us, when it because I, I downloaded Instagram in the first 30 days that it came out, oh. uh, and we all thought it was a filter app. For your photos, yeah, mm-hmm. same. we didn't know it was a, like a social media app. We didn't know you could follow people; people could follow you. So, um, pe- people had no idea. So, yeah. so there, there was a girl I, I knew in college who was it was like a Christian college, but she was embarrassed because she started sent, she was sending her boyfriend inappropriate pictures, and she was editing them on Instagram. Lord. And didn't know that it was. Uh, <laughs> she thought it was just a. Uh, Colin went to prayer. <laughs> yeah. She just thought it was a filter no app. Way. That's crazy. And so That's she had like nine photos of her just just publicly just out, there. out there of just inappropriate photos that she's sending her boyfriend. Why is she filtering her photos? <laughs> I, I'm serious. I, I don't Probably know. The I don't know. Right, right, it would be so right, much better right, in black right, and white. Right, like, right, yeah, 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 yeah. The next mom talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna add a gradient filter on this. Uh, you know, so. It's artistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that was like a question I had, but it was, um, yeah. So like it was, she was engaged. It was her fiance. And, and then she, oh, she like man. came to us one day because we were really good friends with her fiance and, and we didn't, we didn't see anything, but she wanted to like, Oh my God. Did you, did you guys see my Instagram thing? And, and, oh, wow. and that's when I first found out my first photo was actually of Heron doing a selfie that, uh, we were in Ooh. his, we were in his dorm in college Heron took a selfie of himself because I showed him like, oh, there's this new app named Instagram where you can filter your photos, which we didn't know was um, also people could follow you. So Heron like takes a selfie and I show him like, oh, look, I'm going to f- put a filter like this and I add it and then I hit done and then it like posted in my feed. So when the girl comes and she's like, did you see my photos or anything? And we're like, what are you talking about? She's like on Instagram. Like, how would I see your Instagram photos? Right. Oh, she's, she's like, cause they're public. Lost. Like yeah. she's like, and everyone's right. like awkwardly, like trying to, <laughs> like, oh, shoot. you know, like we had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> delete, 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 delete. Yeah. So she deleted all of them. Oh. And then, uh, none of us, none of us saw it. But, uh, uh, then I go in and I'm like, I don't have that. And I go and look and then there's Heron in the little corner. <laughs> <laughs> Heron's in the little corner with his little with a little selfie. And I was like, oh shoot, I should be. I don't think I ever deleted though. It might you could probably scroll say, back and still. Pull that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna keep scrolling. What, what is that? Twelve years ago at this point? Thirteen <laughs> years ago? Yeah. That's but wow. that was yeah, that was my first my first photo on Instagram. So it started with certain filters and now you can like change your entire face with putting on <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. how do guys feel about that? Do you guys I mean eventually you're gonna find out and see the girl in <laughs> I'm her just, I'm just so That's why you got I'm so happy I'm married. I think <laughs> for fun it's fine, but when you do it for every single thing, yeah. it's like yeah. Yeah. Teeth. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think anyone like, is trying to deceive the outside world. I think because it's an internal thing, like yeah, I think I think the way we want to perceive ourselves in the long run mm-hmm. outweighs like the reality of like what we look like right now. Because I don't think any women like, and I've seen I've I've known women before who are uh, 
and like there are guys too who use filters too but Uh if you're thinking of specifically you know (laughs) women like i've known women historically who are like you know you you take a group photo and they're like send it to me first i have to filter myself i don't like the way my chin looks blah 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 blah. and so they're not necessarily trying to like some many of them are married they're not really trying to you know, fool the world. It's just they don't want their sec- insecure to always kind of be ever before them. <clears throat> and so then they just edit. And I think if you're a, a content creator that makes money off that stuff, well, the cleaner you look on your page, the yeah. more the presentation is big. Yeah, yeah the more yeah, you I present yourself, depending on what your thing, niche is, but, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but I that, mean, your question yeah. about how guys feel about it, like, I know for myself personally, dating, like, even before Arlene, it was like, okay. We might go on a dinner date here, but I'm trying to see what a you know a workout at the park. What you looking like then too? So I'm not as surprised. <laughs> oh, you, the you first wanted, time you don't see before you got married, you wanted to see her workout at the park. <laughs> huh? How you feel about that? How you feel about that? Aaron <laughs> is his father-in-law. Yeah, your you father-in-law's heard, at his table, you sir. You heard his wedding vows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. did. You were there. Yeah. You heard the wedding yeah, vows. Yeah, I got some. I got some. You wrote your own wedding on vows. I did. did yeah. Hey, he's got some crazy. Okay, so okay, so I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there facilitating the wedding, and. And they Here do their own vows. He's looking at my daughter. <laughs> I want to take every inch <laughs> of your body. No. From, feet In that voice too. from feet. No. From your head to, to your toes. Okay. Like, so what, just, what's just true is I did lower my voice. Like I did lower the voice. <laughs> and everybody like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> just like, turned into Luther Vandross all of a sudden. <laughs> and I'm like this in my, in my chair in the wedding. And then, and then and Ashley's next to me. And Ashley's nudging me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so she's nudging me. So I'm like, get off me. Get hey, off. Songs of Solomon was biblical. Yeah. I t- I t- 100%. Just, you had every at. right to bow what you bow. Yeah. No, I remember when I got married, Pastor Adam was like, just stick with the normal vows. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't let people do their own vows. Like oh, they, really? they have to fight me to do it. Like they have to be like, and I'll be like, hey, let, let let's let's one on one test it, because right. or else, so like I don't know. If you if you go back, would you change? Would you change? It? No. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm no. glad you. you know, I mean, I'm glad I you wouldn't change mine either. I Thank you yours. for the advice. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad you would. It was great. I, I, did, I did have but you're thoughts. You're good so. with your words. I had thoughts so before because I had thoughts of you know my parents gonna be there, her parents like. Everybody's gonna be there, family. Some family I haven't seen in years. Some I just saw yesterday. And speaking with my best man, I was like, I don't know if some of what I'm doing too much about. But he was like, bro, it's your wedding day. You don't get to do yeah. this ever yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You For have sure. fun with it. You use your discernment and go. That's your wife. So that's yeah. That's where that you're a poet. Came from. So you're good with your words. Right. Um, it was memorable for sure, <laughs> <laughs> and I liked it. But like you're rare. You're, it's rare because you're you're good with your words. You're you're you you historically done spoken word and poetry. So if someone was, if I was marrying someone and they had that, they're like I really want to do, it, and I'd be like, mm-hmm. I'm sure you got it. You, you know, just but, don't outshine your wife. Like that mm-hmm. would be my advice to someone if they said, Oh, I'm good speaking. I'd be like, Well, don't don't be so good that then right. your wife is scared. But Eileen's mm-hmm. very confident public speaker as well. So you guys had mm-hmm. that going for you, but. Nine times out of ten, when I'm working uh, with couples beforehand, I say, "Hey, the amount of times couple end up <laughs> okay. couples end up regretting doing their personal vows, mm. do it together for sure. Do it before, do it after. Write each other a letter. Yeah. Write write your heart. One hundred percent, do it. But mm-hmm. but people's number one fear in life is public speaking. Mm. After that is like heights and death. You know, <laughs> number one is public speaking. Yeah." But people think, oh, it'll be my friends and family. I'll be fine. Nah. And then they get, man, the <laughs> no. amount of times. That don't take I had I, I one time had a couple that I did, and uh, the, it was, I can't remember if it was the girl or guy, but the let's just say the guy. The, the guy pulls out this, like, long letter, this beautiful letter. It's, like, three pages, and he's, like, you know, references back them dating and all these things, and then, and then it goes to the girl, and she didn't write anything down. Mm-hmm. She thought I could I could memorize what I want to say, and she folds and she just basically ends up clowning him, you know, no. like basically like because she's, yeah. she's nervous because she's nervous, so she's just open. like, well. I'm so glad we here, you know, it took you long enough, and Ooh. I know we didn't do it right, and we had a kid first, and but but I know we're gonna be, and you're just like sitting there like, oh no, no don't do, you know like, and so I just I've had you know I've done probably. <laughs> 60 weddings, you know, mm. in the past, I don't know, uh, six, seven years. So I've seen enough now that I'm like, 
don't write, don't do your own vows unless yeah. you're very good at communicating yeah. in a public setting. Well, especially we had you know, enough to worry yeah. about. The last thing I want to be thinking about is like, oh, I need to go over here and make sure I write For something sure. super Bonson, heartfelt. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah. And even if you are, I'm very good at public speaking, but mm. I, I didn't, well, you didn't, me and Ashley didn't choose to write our own vows because I, mm. I, I just think it's a different type of pressure on it that right. unless you're more of a poet like right. Colin that can really do well at, expressing yourself and kissing feet and stuff like that that you shared. <laughs> I missed a lot. I, I, I was like, I wanted to make Somebody you know, got the video. That's what he said. Yeah, Somebody yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was, it was what even crazier. Someone ought to sue, sue the venue you guys got married in because oh, no. they got the, this hill and so only the first four rows can see you guys getting married. Everyone else sitting behind it. No way. Couldn't see you guys. I did see some people standing up back there. So yeah, that and then we felt like if we stood, we ruined it for other people, or you just wouldn't be honoring anymore. And mm. so, like literally, the first four rows could see it, and there was mm. about eleven rows. So in our row, we could only hear you guys. Oh, so you just so here I am, just looking at, <laughs> I think Alex and Leslie's head or something like that, <laughs> someone's head. I'm looking at someone's head, and I just hear calling like, "Ooh, girls." <laughs> I'm like, did they get Luther Van Dross <laughs> to come in? <laughs> I oh, couldn't even man. see. So I'm like, dude, oh, I got my, my phone out on video, <laughs> and I'm trying to, so just so I can see you. I'm like zooming in. I'm like, oh, I got to see how this brother's doing you know this what? right I, now. I'm glad that part went smoother <laughs> than we always talk about this, trying to put that ring on Eileen's finger, because I must have been up there like a, oh, a yeah. rattlesnake. Oh, I couldn't focus gosh. for the life of he me. He was like... <laughs> Well, yeah, because you were you were focused on your vows, right? Like that that was a mission. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I got married during COVID. Yeah. It was a hot mess, so don't worry, you're hey, not alone. You got married. That's the key point. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we got married. Sure. Was we it were happy? You and Beth were getting married, and then your venue canceled on you like two oh, weeks before. No. The week. No. Of. The week of. No. Yes, I remember. I was yeah. like crying in your eyes. I know. No way. No. Yes. Yes, we had everything. I'm talking the cake, I'm talking the DJ, the flowers, all ready to go. And I won't say the venue because they let us down. <laughs> yeah. um, and then yeah. just like the week of, like I'm talking, it, might, it must have been like the Saturday before. Hmm. No basically way. called us up and said, hey, we're going to refund you everything because we're going into another shutdown. And <laughs> I'm thinking... The Mind week, you, this was like the second shutdown that <laughs> like was 50 50 like it was right, gonna right, happen right. it was gonna happen but 50 percent of businesses were like man bump that right. and then yeah. the 50 were like okay maybe we will yeah. so it was uh but continue yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm crying on the phone with your wife yeah. <laughs> and i'm like they're gonna close it down on us and we're not gonna get married and then i think you guys had talked and was like look if it's in our backyard if it's in the chapel or if it's up at lake arrowhead we're gonna make it happen and I was like, yeah i love you guys yeah, yeah, and we did, and it, it was so good. Seven days. That's what's up. We and did. Lake Arrowhead. Yeah. The Community. DJ went wow. up there. The flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and you would have never known right. that it was planned in seven days. You, <laughs> ne you never. It was done off. so well. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, wow. the DJ was great. Your yeah, DJ was great. He was excellent. But the, yeah, everything turned out great. Praise God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. That. That was a crazy. That was a crazy Good memories, season with though. that. Yeah. And yeah. it was cold. It was like December. Yeah, let me make sure I have my It was. Yeah, right. it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're up at Lake Arrowhead, so it's like freezing. But yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sunset and it's like. Small price to pay. 40. We had a yeah. whole venue that we oh, what do you think? Yeah, it's what they do in the Midwest all year long, pretty much. So right. we get married in the freezing cold. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. All right. Wait, one, you both, wait, one of you guys, who said you found a video, mm -hmm. but Colin had one. Yeah, he had one. So hey, why did you, was about what video? Wow, what what interests so, you about that video? So <laughs> tongues has been a huge topic, like not only in, in my circle of friends, but I think mm -hmm. in my life, like the past really? couple of weeks from, I mean, whether it's been with a couple of parents that I ran into, but with, no with my friends. Mm -hmm. And so um, I saw that video and it reminded me of my first like personal encounter with somebody speaking in tongues. And I had seen it when my dad was first taking us around churches when I was little, like seven or eight, had heard people doing it. And I literally remember hearing it and being like, what, what's going on? And I would sink back into my chair because most of the time it was during, you know, praise and worship. So I remember just being confused by it. And I would sit in my chair like, what, what is that? Like, what's going yeah. on with that person that they sound like that? So never forget this night. I'm, I'm dead asleep and I wake up and I hear my dad speaking in tongues. But at the time, I'm young. I don't know what's going on. So I hear him down the hall. 
he's going like, I mean, I've heard it slower now, but he's going like a thousand miles an hour. So I'm thinking, my dad's getting electrocuted. Like somebody needs to go. <laughs> somebody needs to go help him. <laughs> like my mind isn't understanding, but I'm thinking yeah. that's my first thought. Mm-hmm. He's getting electrocuted. I don't know how, but I need to go help him. And so I'm sprinting down the hallway and my mom pops in and stops and she's like, where are you going? I'm like, you don't hear dad. We have to help him. And so I'm scrapping, trying to get around her. She's like, Colin, calm down, That's calm so down. Like, he's okay. <laughs> I'm like, mom, move. We got to help dad. Yeah. And so she's laughing at me. I remember even that. I was like hurt. I was like, why my mom laughing at me? Like my dad's dying in the other room. <laughs> but, but finally go back to my room and I hear him and he's going on and on and on. And now I hear him break down and he's crying. Like I've never heard a man cry like that ever. Yeah. So. Next morning, we're going to school, and he's like, did I wake you up last night? I was like, yes. Like, are you okay, first of all? Like, what's going on with you? I, how old are you? Like, I was like eight or nine. Okay, or okay, okay. And uh, I was like, are you okay? Like, what's going on with you? Are you good? Because you were getting electrocuted. And he was like, Colin, I wasn't getting electrocuted. I'm okay. And I was like, well, what was happening? He was like, well, you know, we've been going to different churches, and we've been praying over our food and doing Bible studies, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, well, just know that we're going the right way and we're, we're praying to the right God. And like, Jesus is real. Just know that. And I was like, okay, but that did, you're not answering like what happened to you yesterday. Cause I'm not correlating it to, I don't know about yeah. spe- praying in the spirit, any of that yet. <clears throat> but he goes on to say that he was at a point to where he's telling God, like, mm-hmm. if I'm going to have my family following you, if we're going to be serving at this church, um, submitting to this leadership. They were asking him to help serving in the pastor at the time in Long Beach, but telling God, like, if I'm going to be doing this, I need to know you're real and I need to know now. And he says that's when he felt the Holy Spirit come over him and he just had that mm-hmm. unction to, mm-hmm. to pray in the Spirit. And he said, when I started, I couldn't stop. And so he's going, he's trying to explain it to him. I'm little, I'm not, I'm not catching it yet, but I hear him do it again in the car. I was like, that's what I heard yesterday. Like, yeah. what is that? And he was like, he, he's frustrated at these points. Like, Colin, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't, oh, yeah, yeah, I, don't yeah, yeah. I don't understand what I'm saying, but I know it's the Holy Spirit speaking through us, like what we can't understand. And it's it's our heavenly prayer language. That's all. Yeah. That's the best he could break it down to me at that time. So um, that's what literally got my wheels first turning. Like, OK, maybe this God that we're going to and we're singing all these songs and he's sending me off to Sunday's tools, church or whatever. This is maybe this is really than I, I thought it was. So that's when my wheels first literally started turning about God and. That's that's what kind of started the journey to today. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you speak? Have you personally spoken tongues yeah. since then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how old were um, you when you first started? That was oh, was this happened in Germany? Actually, so much happened in Germany. This happened in Germany. Um, the Germans. I, the, the Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> the Deutsche. Um, I think at, at that point in my life, I was just. I was tired of having the minimal from God and doing the, mm. the bare the bare minimum, the basics. And I just remember telling um, some of my leadership out there, I was like, I, I want more. I, I know there's more to this. I, I know there's, you know, that, that intimate relationship. I know there's that discernment, kind of like we were talking about this morning, to where, you know, that I want it to be more personal. Like, I want to see more. I want to hear more from God. I want more dreams, that kind of thing. Um, to that point, I had experienced those things, but it was very like mm. sparingly throughout yeah. my life. So I was just like, I, I want more. And so um, going up to an altar call one day and, and the guy telling me, he, and even that moment helped me up understand. He was like, God isn't going to make you speak in this. You have to willingly mm-hmm. do it yourself. But this is you like acting in faith and trusting like the sounds that the spirit is giving you in that moment. So I just remember following through. He was like, follow my lead initially, but then, you know, let the Holy Spirit talk to you and guide you in what he's giving you. And so following through with that, and it was just like, after that, this feeling of like just clarity in my life yeah. of, okay, like the things I was struggling with sin wise was that was that much more clear, mm. but yeah. also the the things that I was doing right as far as like how to grow closer to him just became that much more clear too. So mm. huge like eye opening moment for me, but um, very, very true to like what, what the word tells us that it does, like as far as like edifying our spirit, man, and, and helping us to, to grow in places that we don't even know, you know, where, wherever we're battling or, or, you know, need protection from. So, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's how And then that leads you to right now where you said in the past couple of weeks, you feel like people are like, it's in the, yeah, in, like in, the, <clears throat> in your circle, your, yes, uh, yes. Where you're regularly around, like um, your friends are talking about it or, or friends, um, accountability partners. We're just, we're really tapping in like, and holding each other. Are have you, have you prayed in the spirit this week or how much time are you spending mm-hmm. that, you know, one-on-one mm-hmm. time with God? Um, and just really leaning on, you know, my brothers in that space to make sure I'm spending that intentional time with God. And, and understanding, I think, the, the not the 
the not just the fruit of it, but the importance of it. Understanding, you know, now mm-hmm. I'm doing full time ministry or married, and you know the things that I'm hoping and praying for in the future. Understanding, hey, all these things that I can't see or might be battling even right, right now, like this, this is warfare for those for those times and for those people. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. And then the clip you saw on TikTok just provoked you to like, of like, yeah. what would what, you would you grab from that? Because yeah. then we'll play it. I mean, it, it literally just took me back to that initial moment I had with my dad. I'm like, dang, I remember my first, like, face-to-face encounter with this and, like, what kind of clicked my understanding on not just tongues, but, like, who God is and, like, hmm. wanting to know more as a kid, like, seeing my wheels turn yep. at that point. So that's kind of yeah, where that, that clip took me. Do you have it, Andy? You want to shoot it? By the way, the comments are, are pretty 50-50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. there's a large Christian community who's anti uh, yeah. praying in the spirit. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Nancy sent me the video and then I looked at the comment because it's mm. Isaiah Sal- Salazar too. He's very controversial. Yeah, but, right. we're talk- um, talking outside we're talking a little about bit. it. Oh, were mm-hmm. you guys? Ooh, interesting. Juicy. Talk about it. <laughs> Play it. And I want them to talk about it. <laughs> or, just hear your overall thoughts on tongues yeah, and praying the, in tongues. This devil doesn't waste his time on things that don't hurt his kingdom. And if the devil has worked overtime to divide the church yes, over one issue, yes. it's over the issue of tongues. Yep. The devil is showing his hand. And I believe by the amount of division and demonic activity against it. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18, the Apostle Paul is looking at the Corinthians who are zealous for spiritual gifts, yes. zealous to move in all the stuff, and he dropped the most gangster verse in the whole wide world. <laughs> this guy's very I passionate. thank God I <laughs> speak with tongues more about. than all of you. <laughs> no, he lived in this. He constantly was, whether he was traveling or working or in prison, in between, everywhere. I think it's the greatest secret to his devotional Mm -hmm. life. I think it's the doorway to the man that walked in the realm of revelation, the man that walked in the character of Christ, in the holiness of Christ, in the power of Christ. The doorway he gave us is, I thank God, I speak with tongues more than all of you. Yeah. Yeah. What were you we all talking about before? The, you guys were talking about this before well, this? or a We were talking day? about Isaiah Saldivar, oh. but I will say one thing. What resonates with me, and you know, we're talking about speaking in tongues, but even especially like your story, especially now being a parent, is that I, whatever I do is that my kid is going to mimic in a certain way. So very similar to your story, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and my mom slapping oil, you know, on my forehead (laughs) and speaking in tongues, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, seeing her do those things growing up, whether it was speaking in tongues, whether it was the oil, whether it was just even her prayers, like I was able to, in a way, mimic that. And I hope to teach that to my daughter. Yeah. So that's a beautiful story. It resonates with me, especially more so now that I have a baby. Mm-hmm. But go ahead, get into it, Colin. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> she went into the nice side. Yeah. Like, I'm a mother now. Right. Like, <laughs> I'd be putting oil on my baby head. I mean, <laughs> sure do. I'd be anointing my whole house. Like right I up. stay strapped with my <laughs> oil. Like all of everyone in here knows. Yeah. Like don't play. Man. Uh, I mean, so the first thing you had mentioned to me was that was that he was a yeller, a very passionate <laughs> speaker when it came to when it came to things of the spirit. But um, I think what really kind of, as he's saying, like it's a, it's a controversial thing, and knowing okay, maybe the enemy doesn't want you know us as believers aware of this of this tool we got. I mean, like we have we literally have a, a sword in our hands that we don't I'll, maybe some of us don't wield or use as much as we can so um like i said that's just where the conversation has been a lot lately these past couple weeks uh, there's there's this resource to us available from god that we need to tap that much more into and just utilize that much more i think Mm -hmm. um and i think initially me like he's talked about the enemy not wanting us to use it but before Mm -hmm. i had spoken in it the first time there was a there was a fear of there's so much focus on okay what is it going to feel like because i had seen people share that i was watching youtube experiences like what was it like for this person just so worried about everybody else but everybody's experience was like i felt this thing welling up in my belly and then i couldn't Mm -hmm. and like remembering my dad's words and i was like well i don't i don't want to feel like that kind of being worried too much about how it felt instead of literally just stepping out in faith and and doing what god asked despite how it felt but literally all the things he was listening as far as like what comes with that whether it's like the the power and authority that you kind of, you know, walk into as you utilize that more God gives you or just the, um, we were talking about discernment and insight this morning. I was at that point in my life, I was like, God, I want more. I don't know what it was, but it was just, God, I want more. Like I want, I want to walk in those things. I want to experience these things for myself. All my friends are going through it. They're coming to me with, with dreams of what God mm-hmm. is giving for them. And it's coming to life. They're coming to me with, you know, words of knowledge. Like God, I want, I want that for myself instead of leaning kind of on everybody else's faith to, you know, be able yeah. to move forward. So. Yeah. 
Well, and we also spoke about the controversy um, because Isaiah Saldivar, like he's a part of that demon slayer movement, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But that also resonates with me because I feel like that's something that is just so taboo um, amongst Christian culture right now. Um, And it feels like either you're for or against it when I feel like there is actually a very much happy middle of understanding that, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's also very practical things that we can mm-hmm. also do. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, where is that middleman? Because mm-hmm. I know even someone like myself who does operate within the prophetic, you know, I'm talking dreams, I'm talking, um, well, a lot of dreams, to be honest. Okay. Um, and just having um, that experience of having that, that, that discernment and that sense of uh, demonic forces or spiritual warfare. Like, so, you know, what is that middleman of understanding, like, no, this is spiritual warfare, but then there's also some very practical things that we can do. I know even as a child, there would be a lot of times where I would have dreams where I'm looking someone, you know, as close as we are, but in their eyes, I can see Mm -hmm. like, oh, this is a demonic force, a demonic presence. Mm -hmm. And so when I don't know what to pray and I don't know what to do, you know, obviously you speak the name of Jesus, but then also too, I'm talking like speaking in tongues in my dreams. And Mm -hmm. so I think that there's so much power back to speaking in tongues, because when you don't know what else to say, you don't know what else to do, and you're forced to be put in a position where there is um, some type of demonic presence, some type of spiritual warfare going on, the best thing I know to do is to speak in tongues. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. I had a thought when you were talking about the, you're talking about the spiritual discernment versus like the practical reality of things. What's that middleman? Could middleman be community? Because because we, because we're, we're the church and everybody has different giftings, different wirings, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, dreams, operating the prophetic, blah, blah, blah. But if you talk to me, I'm going to say devotional, mm-hmm. read mm-hmm. your Bible, mm-hmm. memorize scripture, right? Right. Yeah. But, but that makes the body of Christ better, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, I'm just, that was just a raw thought I was thinking about, like, because sometimes you'll see a pastor whose wiring is that way, so the whole church goes that way. Mm-hmm. And maybe they don't have a council of people that can help balance that, so not mm-hmm. necessarily he has to be so uh, middleman, mm-hmm. but... We, we we know Adam bends this way. We know Aaron bends this way. But then, them coming as thought partners together may be a middle ground. Yeah, I think what sure. what you're saying is huge because it's like we can be doing all that. We can be battling it in times every day. We can be spending that prayer and devotional time. But like even biblically, it says if I'm doing all these things, but I'm not loving people, then it's right. like well, what, what is it good for? Are all these things thing, you know? So like people. understanding that part, like I'm I can operate and kind of you know go forward in. And this gift and kind of this this journey of God like developing me that spiritually that way. But yeah. if I'm not using it to love my brother, like what what for is sure. it for? Kind of thing, you know. So that's yeah. that's huge. Yeah, that's a big part. Yeah, I, and I like for me, I, I you know I speak in every, uh, tongues every day, and I won't beat mm-hmm. a dead horse because I, I I personally shared my story many times on the podcast, so many people may remember it or not. But from the first seven years of my faith, I didn't speak in tongues, not because I didn't want to, because mm-hmm. I thought it was phony, and so. Uh, you know, listen to every John MacArthur sermon you could ever listen to. I was reformed, all that stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, um, I was able to debate anyone, uh, against tongues at the time mm-hmm. and everything like that. And then, um, my area of study in college is apologetics. So the mm-hmm. art of debate. And so, mm-hmm. um, that is my lean towards everything is is debate the 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 philosophy behind debate mm-hmm. the ph- the philosophy behind is setting up an, a hypothesis hypothesis setting up a statement and then arguing your point with valid data behind it mm-hmm. uh, and so for so many years it was like man there's not no valid data on tongues and blah 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 and then you know through recourse of a of a few actual experiences that um I had seen one was me being a youth pastor. I took eight students up to Modesto, Michael Berto's church. He had Dave Hall, who's become a friend over the years, and he's talking about praying in the spirit. I know these youth students don't know anything about it because we talked about it early on. I knew that was like a, I knew that was going to be like a thing they were going to do at this conference. And so I'm talking, my, my students had no idea what tongues was. And I didn't tell them what tongues was because mm-hmm. I didn't want them to do it and I didn't want them to believe in it. So I thought, if I don't just tell them, if I don't tell them what it is, they won't do it. Yeah. And they'll think it's silly when we go to this conference, you know? And then sure enough, they're there. And 
uh, there were, took about eight of them. I think six or seven out of the eight started speaking in tongues that night. And I'm right there. And I'm like, what the heck? And uh-huh. I know what it is, mm-hmm. but I know that in my eyes it's not legitimate. Mm-hmm. But they're all doing it. And we talked about it going up. They, I was like, do any of you guys know how to fake speak in tongues? Like, no. What is, you know, what is, we don't, mm-hmm. you know what it sounds like? No, I don't know what it sounds like. So mm-hmm. I'm like, because I'm, 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 you know, I'm just getting ready. And then, <laughs> then they do it. And I'm like, wow. well, we talked about it before. I know for sure they don't know mm-hmm. yeah. how it sounds. What it, I'm their youth pastor, so I'm not teaching in youth service. Mm-hmm. They might have heard it in a sanctuary one or two, or their parents might have taught them. But as far as this group came, they didn't know because yeah. I was asking them. So that made me like start questioning some things. Then um, Dave Hall and Jamin Chavez, thankfully, well, mm. um, I was very honest with them, told them I didn't believe in it, asked if I could start asking them questions, start having a, a scripture dialogue with them, with, with me now having somewhat of an open mind rather than a closed off mind. Um, their arguments were really strong, how they viewed it. Um, I started reapproaching the scriptures based off breaking down that argument again. And I thought, okay, well, um, Paul says there is a language that men don't understand. He never says mm-hmm. it's not allowed. So if you come from John MacArthur's camp or anyone else, they say, yeah, Paul's trying to correct it, that that was a pagan uh, practice that would happen. And even Plato mm-hmm. wrote about it and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, there's to me, there's not enough room in there because mm-hmm. he says that he wishes everyone did it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He does, to me, differentiate the difference between an Acts 2 experience with speaking known languages to... Yeah. A First Corinthians experience, which is he mixes them both, which was known language and then also uh, tongues of angels. And so, you know, I'm like re-looking at it. And, it, and it, so then from that point, I just said, God, because I feel like at one point I had been in my head, I had thought I had been fake filled with the Holy Spirit. Like mm-hmm. I knew I could mm-hmm. do it, mm-hmm. but I thought that was like mm-hmm. me just being indoctrinated in mm-hmm. a young age. So I just said, well, I'm just going to do that version of the one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I promised God for the next 12 months, I was in 2014, I said in the next tw- for the next 12 months, I'll do it every day. And over this next 12 months, you just have to make yourself real to me if you want, if you want me to continue mm. to do this. And 2014 for me, going into 15, was an out- absolute pivotal time in my life that I saw God's hand mm-hmm. uh, more real in my life than ever, you mm. know having, you know, a best friend, having an affair with another best friend and mm. losing two groomsmen in my wedding, one to drug addiction, another to this and that, and, you know, even other stuff and then getting married. But it was like through that whole thing, God was faithful and he was good and he was true. And I was speaking in tongues every day. Mm. And I had felt, I had felt more, I had felt more equipped than I ever did for the seven years earlier of my faith. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, that was like a big, because I had run the, I, I know Greek fluently. I knew Hebrew fluently. Mm-hmm. I prayed out of my Bible every single day. And in that 12 months, it's just like, I felt stronger, mm-hmm. but it, right. I like, it wasn't my yeah. strength. I knew it wasn't right. my strength. It was just like, I felt more equipped to handle uh, life's uh, distractions, life's, um, whether you want to say it's Satan's snares or just humanity snares with their own will. But either way, it's like I just felt more confident that I could go through what it was that was being thrown at me. And I definitely don't think if I wasn't speaking in tongues, if I had went through all that stuff I went through with my friendships and relationships and other stuff, I don't know where I would have stood. Uh, Like maybe I would have gotten bitter. My heart would have been cold. Maybe I wouldn't have been in ministry today or whatever it was. But um, that was like that was really like really pivotal. And so ever since then, I've, I've spoken in tongues and I, and I feel like my, my argument is, is pretty base on how I feel about it. But that goes to say on like on the same flip side, the reason why I'm not really a big fan of maybe Isaiah or the demon slayers, and I'm definitely not a fan of the critics of Isaiah in this particular context of, of the tongues mm. uh, conversation is here's my only, here's my only reason. You know, I would tell Isaiah that he now goes to my friend Micah's church up in Modesto. He just joined it. I have no problem telling these individuals this. And it's not short that one day I will be in the same room with them. And I have no problem saying, I love the work you guys are doing. I believe what you're doing is legitimate. Here's the only reason why I'm not a fan of your guys' ministries. And you cannot be not a fan of mine. You probably wouldn't be because you'd probably think I'm a coward in some ways. Of yeah, I'm not doing demon slaying enough, you know, mm. but but because I know how they feel because they share it on their pulpits all the time. And so my biggest issue with these individuals on both sides 
is that in order for them to make their points, they're always criticizing someone else. Mm. It drives me nuts because coming from apologetic background, God. you are immediately a fool if you have to criticize someone to make your point. Yeah. It, it means you don't know what you're talking about. It means you have not thought your thought out well enough that you have you can persuade anyone without... It, it's basically everyone preaching today trying to argue your point has become the same as political debates That's today. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah. The Republican parties and yep. the Democrats, they don't debate anymore. Nope. They just criticize right. each other. WWF. 100%. Yeah, they don't, and America, because it's viral and we love mm -hmm. to see it and all these other things like that, but unfortunately, it's not real debate and they're not actually right. sharing real ideas. Right. Maybe, maybe in, an, in a two-hour debate, maybe 15 minutes was legitimately weighty. We're like, you can go read you know, document records, which I had to in my apologetic uh, course, like I had to read document records of how Abraham Lincoln used to argue mm -hmm. points. And I used, I had to read document records on how Ulrich Zwingli and Martin Luther and others went to court in the Catholic church and had to argue their ideas. And we'd have to like reverse engineer it and say mm -hmm. what they did good or what they did bad or whatever it was. So when I listen to many of these guys, which I have, it's like, how come every time you're trying to sway the audience to embrace your thought, you're always bringing up the other guy? You know, yep. these stupid pastors who are cowards. They're cowards to to cast out demons. And, and they just, they don't want to lose people, whatever the reason they is. But it's all about those pastors aren't Christian enough. Those people don't love Jesus enough. These people don't. And to me, it's not. I can tell the difference between a prophetic rebuke and mm -hmm. an argument rebuke. Right. I, there's a difference between the. A prophetic rebuke is there to rebuke the room, not people outside the room. Mm. <laughs> so a prophetic rebuke is for those in the seats. But everyone that's in the seats is agreeing with you. You're right. you're 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 talking about everyone else that's not in the room, which wouldn't be a prophetic rebuke because they're not hearing it. Maybe unless you clipped it, but that's yeah. about it. So right. for me, it's just when I hear that stuff, I immediately devalue a lot mm -hmm. of what they're saying because I just go, just preach and share your conviction and share the scriptures mm -hmm. and create an atmosphere and spirit where the God can move, whether it's through casting out these demons, whether it's through giving someone deliverance, whether it's through praying in the spirit, but don't use of 40 minutes, 20 minutes is just bashing people who don't do it. Because yeah. the moment you do that, everyone thinks, well, if they're lower than, it means you're higher than. For sure. Right. And it's an argument form, but it's a very weak argument form. Anyone, it's it's the Donald Trump argument form, right? It's that if I make everyone else look weak and stupid, mm -hmm. then logically, you must think I'm stronger. And if mm -hmm. you think I'm stronger, then you're logically going to have to think I'm right. And so now everyone has kind of embraced that culture and everyone has run towards that. And so preachers are doing it and it, it just gets under my skin when they do it. Cause mm -hmm. I go, what you're saying is good. Mm -hmm. Like j j just yeah. stop <laughs> criticizing yeah. everyone else yeah. who's not doing it the way you're doing it. For sure. Just argue your point, yeah. just preach the word, just create an atmosphere. Stop trashing on everyone else. Cause you look foolish to me, mm -hmm. to someone who's, maybe not in, you know, maybe not, you know, aware of how argument works or whatever. They might go like, mm. oh, man, I like that he's calling other people out. Oh, it's mm. not calling. A, he's not calling other people out. He's elevating his argument mm. based off what they're not doing. And guess what? They're not in the room to right. defend it or yeah. explain themselves. Yeah. And so now and so like to me, whether it's on a reformed side, whether it's on a charismatic side, if the moment I hear someone just trash on someone, I just go, I check it. I just go, I'm out. I'm out. It's like, not for I'm, me. It's not for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, the word should speak you, for itself. You, you just let it speak for itself. Let the spirit speak for itself. You, it, 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 it's very rare that you find criticism in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, even the point that, you know, the, the scriptures say, you know, uh, uh, they, they're, they're preaching Jesus for this gain and this gain, and they're preaching Jesus for this reason and this reason. And then Paul says, thank, let's just thank God that Jesus is being preached, yes. right? Because mm -hmm. everyone wanted to focus on the motives and this person's mm -hmm. doing it for this. And he goes, God, if Jesus is preached, then in the, God I will rejoice. work. God, I rejoice because God will work inside of it. Yeah. Let's not, you know, yeah. Let's not be critical. Discipline and criticism are two different things. Mm. So you can't point to the scriptures where Paul is disciplining someone or a group of people and say, see, look, Paul's criticizing. No, 
Paul is disciplining particular people mm-hmm. in the church. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. He's not creating a script for you to go on social media and just like trash anyone that's not your type of that's Christian, right? And so that for me is like at least leading in this church, like that is the only line that I draw. Like I try to diversify because you go to other churches, every preacher is a carbon copy of each other. Mm-hmm. You basically have to preach the same, like a lot of the Demon Slayer conferences and other stuff, like mm-hmm. they're pr- all pretty much saying the same thing. There's not really, each speaker is essentially leading to the same the same thought every single time, mm-hmm. right. uh, But w- which is nice. It's fine. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But, but, but for me, that's trying to cultivate an atmosphere that allows a deep love for scripture while also a deep desire for the move of the Spirit. The only way you can do that mm-hmm. is by having people in your leadership team and on your pulpit that emphasize those things differently. Mm-hmm. 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 It's not really a way mm-hmm. to just create a, a pure balance, mm-hmm. you right, know, right, right. Mm-hmm. You, you like in, a, in, your, in an individual person, mm-hmm. right? You're going to meet For someone sure. and one person's going to be mm-hmm. more spiritual and prophetic mm-hmm. and another person's going to be very grounded mm-hmm. and very word heavy and all these things like that. And mm-hmm. far be it for me to be like, hey, Alessa, like you need to ground yourself a little more. And mm-hmm. you'd be like, how do I do that because I feel like God's speaking to me this way or mm-hmm. me going to Aaron and be like, hey, we need more prophetic touches from you. And he'd be, man, it's so foreign to me. I don't know. Yeah. Like yeah. my yeah. pastor friends asked me like, um, Adam, when do you preach on tongues? I, said, I believe in it. I talk about it all the time, but I bring friends to talk about tongues because that's, mm. that's where, that's the passion God has given them. Mm-hmm. And I just wouldn't communicate it in a way because in a way that would have, that would get the action that we want to see. So then I bring people in and yeah, say, hey, wisdom, do though. moves of the spirit. Yeah. And, and, you know, and like, humility. Yeah. And yeah. humility. Yeah. For but sure. I definitely see worry. wisdom in, in what you're saying and understanding that we're constantly called Christ's body, right? And I think understanding like, hey, if, if you're bringing this aspect or this perspective, you might be functioning as a lung right now and you mm-hmm. might be functioning as a, a another organ, a kidney or a pancreas, whatever, whatever the organs are, but like yep. not every person that's working within that body is called to come and do the exact same thing. For like sure. I'm going to bring a different perspective or, or touch on a particular thing versus what, what you might bring or offer in that space. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the challenging part is a lot of times Christians don't stay long enough in their community to reap the benefits of that. Mm-hmm. We were talking about a plan for discipleship sprints, and you're like, I don't want to just package everything in one year. Mm-hmm. Let's take people on a journey. Mm-hmm. We want to we want to look at this five years, ten years, how we've discipled people, and it's like, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. But culture's doing the opposite. You got to learn it quick, and, and then you got to be all things they all meant. Now you got to. No, we want you right. speaking in tongues in thirty days. We yeah. want you prophesying in thirty days. We want yeah. you to learn Greek in thirty days. We want you to learn and check it off the know, list. Right. Yeah, yeah, and check in. You know, and like, yeah. you know, okay, that's the life of the believer, right? <laughs> it's like, it's not. It's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. You take Timothy. He's like Paul's. Like, remember your grandma and your mom. What they've mm-hmm. taught you. What I'm teaching you. It's this idea of progressive. Mm-hmm. You know, in the Bible school world, we call it progressive sanctification. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's this idea that that you get saved today, in no way are you going to look like the person you look like, you know, yesterday. And I, yeah. I was talking to a guy on Sunday who just who just feels like he's failing in mm-hmm. his faith, mm-hmm. and he's just like, man, I'm still I'm trying. It's like womanizing, and I had that, and like every once in a while I fail and I fall, and mm-hmm. so I'm talking to him like, hey, tell me a little bit about like what you look like before Christ, like, oh, drugs, alcohol, slept with women every weekend. I said, okay, let's put this into perspective. Right. You went from before you were saved two years ago or whatever, every weekend mm-hmm. you were sleeping with a new girl, mm-hmm. you were high every day, you are drinking all the time, to today, three weeks ago, you slipped up. Mm-hmm. You watched porn or you took a girl home or whatever that is. I said, I said, isn't it beautiful that the Lord has taken you from in two years, mm-hmm. smoking every day, drinking every day, a new girl every weekend, to every once in a while you find yourself in your sit. I said, and bro, once you're you, not- <laughs> And once you do that, <laughs> yeah. you confess it with brokenness to yeah. a pastor. You're telling your years ago, right? you're not. You're not it's yeah. conviction now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you're true. talking yeah. to your pastor right now, and you're mm-hmm. telling me how you feel like a piece of crap, you're failing, you're falling short. Mm-hmm. And I just encourage, I'm like, bro, put your faith into perspective. Right. You, God has done a work in your life, and you are doing well. Don't take pride in it. Mm-hmm. But also don't demonize yourself because he's like, I just thought I would have had all this stuff like figured out already. And I would just like 
it'd be easy to just say no, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. well, hey, like, don't we all wish it was that way, right. you know, but it was encouraging to him to be like, you are so much more different than you were two, two mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, be encouraged by that. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't you know? there a tendency amongst Christians to want to compare? Mm. You know, yeah. we just talked yeah. about how we each probably have different giftings and we each um, bring something unique to the table. But, you know, the thief of joy is essentially comparison. Yeah. So, you know, you have this gentleman who's probably coming to the church and comparing himself, even to maybe you or you who yeah. are essentially pastors here. And, yeah. you know, you guys do such a good job of like sharing your testimony so that it feels attainable because I feel like some people think that Christianity is either undesirable or unattainable. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I think that it's important for us to make sure that we're consistently telling and encouraging people that, hey, look, like it is attainable and it is desirable and you see the fruits in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, we, I think we do, I think we do do that often. And, and I know a lot of senior leader pastors and uh, even on a senior leadership with guys who've been mm-hmm. in the church a long time and who lead churches, they, they, they tend to get, which is reason why you get at many ministries, all of the speakers and the preaching and the people on staff are carbon copies of each other. Mm. Because generally, whatever the leadership makeup is, so maybe it's one guy, maybe it's a handful of people, whatever it is, uh, the moment you step out of whatever framework they want or they've created, they begin to get fearful that that maybe people will like that person more. Maybe mm. they'll, maybe maybe if he wants to go plant a church, they'll follow him because they like this more or whatever. And so there's an insecurity that drives to say, um, I don't care if you have a, pa- Aaron, I don't care if you have a passion to preach the word. I need you to lock into topical. I need okay. you to bop, 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 because the moment you do that, people are going to be coming to you and be like, I want that every day. And why aren't you blah, blah, blah. And they're going to, I'm going to go to the pastor and be like, I want that every day. Like if someone comes up to me and goes, I really like when we do blank. I'll be like, man, thank God. I'm glad we're doing it. And they go, well, I want more of it. And I'm like, well, there's a lot of things I want more of. Mm -hmm. Thank God I have faith. And and thank God that the body is unique. There's so many, like, so the people that come to me and go like, I want more deliverance. I'm like, thank God we're in LA area and Inland Empire. There's about one every weekend. Mm -hmm. You should go to them. Mm -hmm. Well, I want them at my church. Like, like we we are have we do a thing called forward and they're four weeks and it's intensive and it's to follow a discipleship journey after because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. a lot of these deliverance things go God bless you was we'll saved next time we're in town mm. come back again and ever since then that person just right. floats we'll and then the over. demons you know? are coming yeah. back yeah. tenfold yeah, right we'll yeah because that yeah. person is alone right. and 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 that person j- joins no community and mm-hmm. most those churches do not have a follow up discipleship process and right. so so like for me I'm like hey this this is what we're going to lock in. We're, we're, we lock into the lifeline discipleship journey for a family. Mm-hmm. Built inside of it is solid teaching of the word. Uh, built into it is a love for deliverance. Built into yeah. it is a heavy emphasis on the spirit of God. But are you going to salivate and see each one shine every single weekend? Mm-hmm. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you do, that church takes a framework one way. And then everyone kind of drives in that direction, like Aaron was saying. Mm. And then this is where Paul, what I believe why he was writing the letter is because when you, let's just take a spiritual component, when you draw from that well every single Sunday, then guess what? People don't worship Christ anymore. They worship the move or the gift, Mm. which is why Paul said, I wish all everyone had, and I do it more than you. And, Mm -hmm. but listen, like love. Right. Love yes. you, you like you need to love, confront and Christ sin. is the center, and yeah. you need yeah. to confront. You know, and so he's giving this uh, this thought analogy to say, as far as you guys in Corinth, mm. which is down the block from most of the craziest pagan religions in the world that mm. have expressive things, where people would cut themselves and women would go up naked mm-hmm. on the altar and offer prostitution and all these things like that. So Paul's like, that's your backyard, right? So of course you're going to want to compete with your backyard. Mm-hmm. And and because the spirit is real, you could do more signs and miracles than any of those people. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you want to prophesy. Of course, you want to speak in tongues, both of man and of angel, because it's very impressive to the world around you. Right. But, hey, let's let's not forget why we're here. Yep. So the problem mm-hmm. is, is, is for Corinth, all they wanted was Sunday spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. So churches that usually follow that script 
overall, they pretty have they have a pretty weak discipleship process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to grow in your faith in those areas. How do I know? Because I I've spoken at places like that, yeah. and the guy who got deliverance 24 months ago when I'm speaking at the conference is up at the altar again for deliverance for the ninth time. Mm-hmm. Right. Listen, deliverance is deliverance. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> you should look different two years later than you yeah. did. So it like, and it's not because of his fault. Mm. It's because it's part of the job's responsibility to both and. If you're yeah. going to be heavy on spiritual deliverance, you also have to make sure it is all mm. based from the scriptures and that there is a follow-up process right. on how this person's journey of victory over this sin or victory over this deliverance Mm -hmm. looks like afterwards. Mm -hmm. They're probably out there, but many of those circumstances don't follow that. And so to me, there has to be a very strong balance. The only way you could do that is by having unique people on your team that can help gird and and gird and lead the ship in that direction Mm -hmm. that if you're a charismatic church, some churches aren't, uh, I hope, I wish they were, but, but if you're like us, where we're like, we got people that come on Sunday mm-hmm. that listen to John Piper and John MacArthur every week, mm-hmm. verse by verse teaching. And they come to church here because they like the practicality of the teaching and application. <laughs> and also they love how their family's being ministered to. Mm-hmm. And so even if they had an opportunity to go to that church, they wouldn't because yeah. they lo- and they and they have enough maturity to say, this is where I fellowship on Sundays. This is where I get fed on Sundays. But I'm a Christian that can feed themselves. I'm mm. also learning from, you know, Vody Bacham, Matt Chandler, John McCarthy, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And then there are also very mature people who come to tr- our, tr- our church on Sundays too, who say, mm. I listen to Isaiah. I listen to, you know, many of these other guys on, on, uh, during the week, many of these mm-hmm. other more kind of prophecy led people mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But this is where I fellowship on Sundays. Why? Because I like that I get out on a timely manner. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, you know, yada, 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 right? Yada, 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 yada. We would be circle, one of yeah. the only churches that mm-hmm. sitting next to each other would be two people that far apart on the train of their faith. Yeah. Where one guy listens to verse by verse every week yeah. and another guy listens to deliverance people every week. But yeah. on Sunday, they fellowship here. Mm-hmm. That is very rare. And the only reason right. why you get to that place, which started from my dad, is you have to drop your ego low mm-hmm. and you have to appreciate everybody's gifts around you and mm-hmm. give yeah. them space to use their gifts like the scriptures command us right. to allow the body to use their gifts yeah. and and you have to just be you have to leave your insecurity behind mm-hmm. and just be like I don't I don't need to prove anyone to anyone yeah. you know like yeah. God has God has me where I'm at yeah I, I yeah. don't I don't I don't I don't I don't need to be a good poet like Aaron and do the words play and all that kind of like I'm like oh I'm good. How would you guys <laughs> disciple someone? And I I ask because it seems like it's more and more prominent now. Disciple someone who is fresh out of New Age, fresh out of witchcraft, heavy in the Hispanic culture is what we call uh, brujeria. So how in so them coming from that type of platform, how would you guys disciple them? Because they might be looking for similar signs and wonders. Yeah, yeah. What I would say, what I was well, when I was listening to Pastor Adam talk about the our diverse church, means that we have a reach that those individuals will be a part of our community, right? Mm-hmm. One of the things, no matter if you listen to John MacArthur or a Demon Slayer, life is going to happen. Something happens with your kids, something happens with your marriage, something happens with your finances. One of the things that we really emphasize is community. Because you're not going to a clip for guidance Mm. when your marriage is in shambles. Mm. You want a person, you want people, right? Mm. So what I've done when, um, like at this time, our values aren't aligned, one of the things that we can always be aligned on is pain. How do we respond to pain? How do you respond to pain relationally? And how have those things helped with your pain management? So I just start, I just start with pain. Mm-hmm. I, so what I used to do, it was just no wisdom. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You're going you're gonna to start in Proverbs once a day, and then you're going to get in the mm-hmm. Psalms. And now you got to get in John. You know, and it's like, no. Hey, let's just talk about your pain point. Because mm-hmm. I had to remember what brought me to church. It was not Proverbs. Mm-hmm. It was pain. Yeah. It was pain. And I the pain that I was dealing with, I didn't trust anybody around to share my pain. Mm. 
So if I get access to somebody sharing their pain with me, man, what an honor to try to help them, mm. not to judge them for what they used to go into, et cetera, et cetera. But if I can show them means of, of, of how to manage that pain in another realm, mm. then I think that's a starting point. And then I don't think we can make ourselves over responsible to change someone's life or, yeah. or get mm -hmm. fearful that, well, since they're doing that, but, but, because boundary says, okay, hey, you got to be willing to pluck your own eye out. Mm -hmm. And that's what it says in the scriptures. Like you got to work out your own salvation with fear and troubling. So anybody that really wants God to the point where they're reaching out to you, or to leaders in the church, then it's like, okay, I'm going to be a resource to help, but I'm not mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, so, so I'm going to be safe. I'm not going to judge you. I can give you some options, but you're going to want this yourself because God's power is way more powerful mm -hmm. than points that I would give you to get through the next week. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 And if, and, and I, I, I've discipled people that came from the occult and stuff like that. Normally what I've seen is about 50-50, mm -hmm. where, where 50% want to see the signs and wonders in a in a Christian sense now, mm -hmm. or, or it's 50 where they don't want to see any because mm. they don't trust signs and wonders because they were in the occult and yeah. so they know how easily manipulated that can be and so and so they actually don't want to be in a church that ha ha has heavy spiritual emphasis emphasis because they don't trust it and so yeah. it's kind of 50 50 which is kind of why our ministry leans the way it is is mm. because there are people who are coming some just need to learn the scriptures right. where they're at in their life like mm. don't don't make this an emotional fluff on sundays because i don't trust that where i came from with the occult or with a previous religion that it was all emotional manipulation. So don't, mm -hmm. you know, don't do that deliverance stuff for me every Sunday because mm -hmm. I don't trust it. Mm -hmm. I, and, and it disconnects me from worshiping God. And now I'm just looking at that preacher. So many that even come from that, there, it's not even people who are just many people try to argue like, Oh, someone doesn't like seeing deliverance because it's, it's foreign to them and it just makes them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. No, for many, actually, it's extremely comfortable that mm -hmm. it's in that space. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, in the extreme comfort, they're just like, I need to learn about God and who mm -hmm. he is. I need my mind completely transformed because my mind was in the gutter for so long with seances or mm -hmm. religious practices of certain prayers and right. blah, 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 blah. So it's like, I just, I can't do that. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's kind of 50, 50 I've seen from people that come out of the occult. If I was discipling someone in the occult, uh, who is desiring these things? My honest uh, remark would be the mm. First Corinthians remark to say, "Hey, we're not we're gonna we're, we're not gonna desire the signs, right. the gifts right now. We're not we're not gonna we're not gonna pursue those things. We're not gonna focus on those things. Mm. Uh, what I want to focus on is we have to renew your mind, as the scriptures tell us. Mm -hmm. We have to get to a place where uh, the word of God overcomes all the occult, occult thoughts." Because if they're delivered already, if there was any demonic oppression there, so let's just assume we're on the back end of deliverance, and now they're just like moving forward in their faith, then it would be we need a radical transformation of their mind and also their understanding of who God is in their life. And then we can start to tap into the benefits of the Spirit as mm. they can understand that and take that without wanting to manipulate God's gifts in their life. Yeah. Or if they were in the occult and they don't want anything to do with those expressions and I was discipling them and all they wanted to learn was Jesus mm -hmm. and the Bible and all that stuff, then I would start to disciple them a different way to say, hey, let's start, uh, let's just start praying. Mm -hmm. Let's just start, let's put this stuff into practice. Let's spend some time. I want you this week to spend five minutes in prayer and I want you to spend five minutes in silence. Mm -hmm. Just see if God begins to speak to you. Yeah. Trust that God wants to move in. So now I'd be encouraging them a little more to embrace the real richness of God's mm -hmm. spirit and the miraculous that God acts. So to me, it's very personal. It's independent. It's like a doctor. Not everyone gets <clears throat> prescribed the same way. It's yeah. kind of like, where's a person at? Where's their fears at? Where their addictions at? Where are their, you know, this, that, and the other. And so, and so um, that's where the community and the discipleship mm -hmm. journey comes from. And, um, and I, you know, I have people that come to me after I preach every Sunday who will give me mm -hmm. little tidbits of that. Like, here's where I'm at my faith. What do yeah. you think? Yeah. And I try to like guide it as much as like, don't, hey, don't worry, don't worry about that right now. Or I'll say, hey, you should you go to forward, go yeah. to, go to right. forward. I think it's really gonna bless your life. 
blah, 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 come and see me afterwards. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll, we'll talk a little more. So yeah. that's kind of usually what I would say someone's dealing with the occult, for yeah. sure. All, and all um, that context is huge. Because like you're saying, you know, as far as honoring their journey and exactly where you're at, but also, like you're saying, not to have to be Jesus or try to be Jesus in right. that situation. I used to get so frustrated when... I would speak to a stranger on the street or even a friend and be like, I'd walk away like, dang, they didn't want to say the sinner's prayer with me today or they didn't say <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord or they didn't do this. And it's like understanding, hey, I might have just been there to plant that seed mm. for that yes. week. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And and somebody else, they might yep. carry that into the next conversation they have on the subway or whatever it may be. Yeah. But just understanding yeah. the, the full context of the situation like you guys are sharing of honor where they're at, but don't try to do it all yourself. It's not our job to, to go in and change their hearts. Mm -hmm. We can give them the clues for that, but ultimately Holy Spirit has to get in there and, and you know, soften that thing. Long yeah, term. yeah, and I and I praise God for whatever God the Spirit leads. So I have people come to me all the time who say, "Hey, you know, we found a church nearby that preaches verse verse by verse. We're gonna start going to because that's really important for our family right mm -hmm. now." And I go, "Man, praise God! Yeah. I'm I'm glad that you feel that's important for you guys. I could I will agree that if you mm -hmm. if God's telling you that that's important, or other people go, "Hey, we're gonna go to this church. There's, uh, it's a little more uh, spiritual every Sunday, and there's you know no time, so sometimes service is two hours, three hours. That's what we want. We just want God to flow and move and blah blah blah. And I go, man, praise God! I'm glad right. you guys mm -hmm. found something that fits what God is doing. I don't go like like, well, that's stupid. That's you know, yeah. I, I don't walk away. I don't. <laughs> yeah. That's dumb. We 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 preach the Bible, or we have moments like that, or whatever. I just go like, man, I'm. I'm so glad God's church is so diverse. I think that's the beauty of the Reformation that no one talks about, that, you know, in, in the 1500s, now we have denominations where, as God would emphasize His Spirit, and normally in almost every city, there's churches just like all of those, you know? Mm. There's churches that are Episcopal, where they, you know, are wearing almost Catholic garments every week, and there's a big cross at the altar. One of my friends is that, and, mm. you know, and they have this you know, altar stension, which represents mm -hmm. God's spirit, and you can go to it, and you can cry at it, and all these mm -hmm. things, and then there's other ones like ours that, you know, are going to have exceptional music, and mm -hmm. it's going to have great family experience, and a relevant message, and then you have another church where it's no time limit, and, yep. every, you know, come to the altar, bring a flag, mm -hmm. shout, dance, jump in tongues, whatever you want, and mm -hmm. it's like, normally there's one of those churches in every city, and I praise God for that. I don't look at it as yeah. anyone. And now, every church in and of itself could be doing something wrong, but just yeah. because it's different isn't a sign that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible prescribes us what churches that are not Christ honoring look like. Mm -hmm. And um, just mm -hmm. because one may preach the Bible every Sunday and no one clap during worship, that doesn't entail the Spirit's not there. Mm -hmm. In the same way that if someone has flags and three hour services, that doesn't mean that spirits eat more there than it is there right but sometimes we fall under that lie that it's mm. competition and look like there's this. one yeah. church that's better than another is in no way you know um god knows what each person needs for what season and yeah. the churches that are not honoring christ god will be held accountable mm -hmm. and scripture makes that clear mm -hmm. you know yep. um and so yeah great conversation anyone have closing thoughts we hit time no Thanks, Alyssa, for hanging out with us for the first time. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. Was it good? Would you do it again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is their first time. Uh, Colin, so glad we could get on your schedule. Thank you so much for making the time. <laughs> I appreciate the heads up. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. God bless. Peace. Peace.